everybody, thank you for watching this video. To safeguard your sensitive data and intellectual property, Kearney Locker was developed as a data loss prevention solution for enterprises. With Kearney Locker protection, staff can use sensitive information as usual, but they cannot take the information out of the company unless they are authorized to do so. Kearney Locker can be used to protect data in various types of systems, such as shared drives, web-based systems, and even CCTV systems. Today, we will demonstrate how Curtney Locker protects files stored in shared drives. Before the demonstration, let's take a look at the architecture of Curtney Locker. In many companies, file servers are used to store and internally share information. Authorized users can log in to the shared folder to access files. However, even when they have permission to access a folder, they can still take the files out of the company through different channels such as USB email, WhatsApp, etc. With Curtain eLocker, administrators can define which shared folders they want to protect. Users can work with these files within the allowed locations, which we call the protected zone. Users can interact with the files within the protected zone, but they cannot copy, save, or email the data to other locations unless they are authorized to do so. That is the architecture of Curtain eLocker. Now, let me show you how eLocker works. In this demonstration, three network drives are protected by eLocker. The protected zone is composed of protected network drives and local protected directory. Administrators can define which systems or shared drives they want to protect. When we open a protected file, you can see a red icon displayed at the top right corner. This icon indicates that the file is under eLocker control. Users can click this icon to view their permissions. For example, this permission means that I can save this file, but only within the protected zone. I cannot save it to non-protected locations. Additionally, I am not allowed to send this file out through different channels such as email. Regarding the print permission, if printing is allowed, the administrator can enforce a watermark on the printout. When users print protected files, the system will log the print activities, including information such as the file name, username, number of pages printed, etc. If you want to know exactly what users printed, you can enable a function called Snapshot for Printouts. Since I do not have permission to save the file outside of the protected zone, let's see what happens when I try to save it outside of the zone. For example, let's try saving it to a USB drive. You can see that eLocker has blocked this action and prompts me with the locations where I can save this file. These locations correspond to the protected zone paths. Next, let me try saving it to a protected location, such as this folder. You can see that I can save the file here. I can even make a copy and rename the file, which does not affect the user's daily operations. Now let me show you how eLocker handles copy and paste. It handles copy and paste in a smart way. Users can copy and paste within protected documents. They can also copy content from non-protected areas, such as websites, and paste the information into their protected documents. However, if they are not authorized, they cannot copy sensitive content and paste it into non-protected areas. As you can see, I am not granted the right to copy content to anywhere. Therefore, I cannot paste the information into an email. 
Let me demonstrate the control for screen capture. If a user is not authorized to capture the screen of protected documents, the area of the protected document will appear gray during screen capture. eLocker does not affect screen capture for non-protected documents. Users simply need to minimize or close the protected document, and then they can use screen capture tools as usual. This control applies to the print screen button and other screen capture tools. Furthermore, eLocker has a function called Screen Watermark. Administrators can enable this function for specific applications or the full screen. The content of the screen watermark is configurable and can contain user information such as computer name, logo name, IP address, and date time information. Moreover, administrators can adjust the font, size, color, and transparency of the watermark. The screen watermark function effectively discourages users from capturing images of sensitive information and sharing it with others. All eLocker controls can be defined by policy. Administrators have the flexibility to define different policies for different user groups based on their specific needs and workflows. For example, Administrators can disable the copy outrights for general users who do not need to share protected documents with external parties. Instead, users can submit a request through the system to management for approval when they need to share protected documents with external parties on an ad hoc basis. For users who frequently need to copy data out, eLocker offers a copy out form function. This allows users to fill out a form declaring their reasons for needing to copy the data. The information from the form is stored in the log database, and team heads can be notified periodically about the data that users have copied out of the company. This provides an audit trail and helps maintain control over data security. Curtin eLocker has a comprehensive audit log for user activities. This is the Curtin Administrator, and I will now show you the audit trail. In this demonstration, we opened and saved some files. Let's take a look at what eLocker has logged for these activities. As you can see, it clearly shows that I opened the file using Excel. I then attempted to save it to the desktop, but a locker blocked the action. Finally, I saved the file to the protected zone, made a copy, and renamed the file. With a locker, you can see in detail the exact actions that users perform on protected documents. Last but not least, I would like to introduce how eLocker protects data in other systems. Let me demonstrate how it secures a web-based system. In this example, we have a web-based system where users who are authorized to access it can easily copy data out by using copy and paste, downloading data, capturing screenshots, and similar actions. Now, let me use eLocker to protect this web system. Done. Once this web system is protected by eLocker, you can observe that I am unable to access this web system in non-protected mode. Users must access this protected system under eLocker's protection. Let me launch a browser under eLocker's protection. With this browser, I can access the web system, but it remains under eLocker's control, as indicated by the red icon permission. Now, you should have a basic idea of a locker. If you have any further questions or queries, please visit our website at www.coworkshop.com or send an email to info at coworkshop.com. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.